Hey guys, what's up? Matt Van Dyke. I'm going to do a quick video for those of you that missed the nutrition seminar Saturday morning. And uh, there's nothing wrong with that. I'm going to get the meat and potatoes and just present them to you right now. Uh, the nutrition seminar, I get to play with the audience and they bounce back and forth and ask questions and talk to them. Um, so it's a good 60 plus minutes. Uh, I'm going to give you guys the meat and potatoes in five to seven. All right. So first things first that we covered today was just a mindset of change and making sure that you're you're ready, you're mentally ready to make those little changes to to go to the store and attack your shopping list like it's nobody's business, get in and out as fast as possible, um, to start cooking that first meal. And that was the request that I had for everybody in the nutrition seminar, was to make sure that you at least cook Sunday night's dinner. And that's gonna lead into lunch for the next morning for a lot of you. And it just gets you into the habit of taking action. So the mindset of change that we're gonna have along this six weeks is going to be uh, just taking these little baby steps, you know, holding you guys accountable to these little baby steps. They're going to start snowballing and gaining momentum and lead you guys to your goals. Okay. And then in the nutrition portion of, of the seminar today, we covered the main model that we're going to follow throughout the challenge. Once you guys receive your meal plans, uh, how we figure that out is we're following uh, the law of thermodynamics. We don't need to worry about that word, but it trickles into the SECO equation and it's just a scientific firm term for calories in versus calories out. And so that's the food that we take in, calories in, versus the food that, um, or the energy that comes out, sorry, the food that we take in versus the energy that we expend on a daily basis, okay? So my movement, if I'm more active, I have more energy going out. Um, if I'm eating too much, I have too much energy going in. So in order to lose weight, I need to eat less than I expend. If I eat more than the energy that I expend, I'm going to gain weight because I have a surplus. And the three worlds that we have in regards to our body composition and the food that we're eating is a surplus, meaning I'm eating more than I'm expending. Maintenance, if you've ever weighed the same for a few weeks or a few months or even a couple years, um, you had been you know, hovering around that maintenance level. You're not gaining weight and you're not losing weight. And if we're losing weight, we're in a deficit, okay? So those are the only three worlds that we have, a surplus, a maintenance, and a deficit. So calories in versus calories out is the main model that we're gonna follow. And uh, it's really why every diet out there works. You know, keto diets can work, or carb cycling diets, paleo diets, Weight Watchers, Atkins, uh, primal diets, clean eating, IIFYM, or if it fits your macros. You know, people are able to make each one of those diets work um, because somehow they're manipulating the energy so that maybe by removing food groups or by breaking their meals up into really small meals, um, there's intermittent fasting where you just eat in a smaller window. Um, so it's hard to consume your entire day's worth of calories in that small of a window. So there's all sorts of different tactics that people use, um, but it's not the diet that's special. It's just that's how they're able to adhere to that deficit. Calories in versus calories out. So some of them remove food groups or do all sorts of different things, and it's always gonna fall under the reason why they're losing weight is calories in versus calories out. So some people are high carbon, some people are low fat, and everywhere in between and all sorts of different patterns. And they can all work as long as we can drive a deficit, okay? and only three worlds, and it would be just like as if I wanted to go forward in a surplus, just moving in a direction, progressing forward, right? And then a deficit would be like going backwards. Maintenance would be just like staying the same, but we can't do like forward and back at the same time. So it really helps clear up the confusion if somebody thinks maybe I'm not eating enough to lose weight. We know that we have enough research that that's probably not true. And um, well, it's not probably, it's just not true. And there's a lot of different examples out there that we can look at. There's a television show, uh, Naked and Afraid, where these people are dropped off on an island. They don't have food. They have to hunt and gather for themselves. And uh, in the end, you know, they get by and they find food and figure out ways to survive. But all of them lose a significant amount of weight. And um, starving to death would just, you know, pretty much be impossible. Um, if, uh, if this wasn't true, you know, if we could plateau and possibly go into a starvation mode and we're not eating enough, but we're gaining weight, um, that wouldn't be possible because that's how people actually starve to death is by not eating enough for so long that they starve. And um, there are special cases um, where people might hit a plateau um, and that would be maybe if they dieted for so long 
that uh, you know mentally they're just not really able to eat less than that expenditure um, needed to drive that weight loss. Uh, so they kind of hit a plateau and it's usually just that their metabolism has become so efficient uh, that it's now just very difficult for them to drop weight. And in those cases, there's, there's other things that we can do. Uh, but in, in regards to general weight loss, uh, calories in versus calories out, surplus maintenance and deficit. Now, your guys' meal plans have everything mapped out for you, but eventually, you know, we want to hop off the meal plan and move maybe towards my fitness panel and learning how to plug in different recipes or foods. Variety is the spice of life, they say. And uh, so the only two things that we're going to worry about in regards to, you know, are macronutrients, because um, calories are comprised of macronutrients, proteins, fats, and carbs. And real quick, just for fun, I just stepped out of frame. Um, protein is four calories per gram. Oops. Carbs are four calories per gram. And our fats are nine. So uh, just a little bit of information. You know, your protein and your carbs are very similar. High fatty meals are gonna be much more calorie dense. Uh, but we did all of that for you. And uh, the reason why is we just wanna really make sure that you understand where your deficit is instead of you having to figure that out on your own. And uh, the most important thing is our calories. So say I, you know, I spend 2,000 calories on average, you know, just moving around my daily activity, how many calories do I burn in a day? Um, as long as I do anything underneath that, 1,900, all the way down to 1,000, um, I will lose weight. Obviously, we don't want too drastic of a weight loss or else it, it's hard to stick with that kind of a diet. It's a little too extreme. And once again, that would be a, a recipe for losing, you know, muscle and maybe dropping your metabolism a little bit and becoming efficient. And so once again, long term, it's going to be hard to stick to. All right, protein, carbs, and fats. Four calories, four calories, and nine. Main things we're going to worry about are your calories and your protein. Um, our carbs and our fats can fluctuate. A lot of people believe in high carb uh, diets and a lot of people believe in low uh, carb diets, sorry, high fat diets. And um, it really doesn't matter. It's up to the individual. Uh, for the most part, what we built into your guys' meal plans is a moderate carb diet. You know, we're really trying to give you guys balance in, you know, as you're trying to lose weight and as you are losing weight, we want to give you guys balance. It's hard enough to be in a deficit and to be losing weight. So to, to be, you know, taking these extremes as far as your carbs and fats, it's just not necessary. It's more to, to overwhelm yourself with. Um, so we just want it to be as balanced as possible. Um, focusing on the calories and the protein. If we're trying to lose weight, just back to this real quick, as long as we're in a deficit, meaning that we're eating less calories than it takes uh, to just basically operate our body for that day, then we're just gonna have to reduce a little bit more if we're not losing weight. And uh, we have multiple meal plans um, from 1,200, 1,400, 1,600, 1,800, 2,000, 2,300, 2,600, 2,900, so on and so forth. So if one of them is not working for you, we can either just pull something out or resend you a, a brand new plan um, that's within that calorie range that's going to get you to lose weight. So we do our best, but sometimes people have really slow metabolisms or sometimes they're losing weight too fast. And we actually give, have to give them a plan that has more food on it. So just post questions in the Facebook group and let us know. Okay, recap. Calories in versus calories out. As long as we're taking in less food than we're expending, we'll lose weight. And the exact opposite for building muscle. We just have to eat more food than we're expending each day, and it'll give us a surplus of calories. There's only three worlds that we can live in when we're dieting or you know playing with our body composition, and that's surplus maintenance and deficit. There's nothing else. You can't be in uh, two worlds at the same time, although you can kind of bounce in and out. For this challenge, we just want to pick one. We're either putting on muscle and we're going to be in a, a surplus, or we're just going to go ahead and create that deficit, start losing that body fat, looking good. Calories are king, protein is queen. We don't have to worry so much as we start transitioning to my fitness pal. Um, we don't have to worry about, you know, how many carbs do I have to hit? How many fats do I have to hit? As long as we're hitting the protein that we've already issued you guys on your meal plans, and you can always ask us, um, hey, I'm on my fitness pal, what, what macro should I have? And we'll, we'll get them to you guys immediately. Uh, calories are king and protein is queen. So as long as our calories are putting us where we want to be for our goals and our protein is adequate, you're not going to lose muscle, at least in the short term period for six weeks. And one other thing that I did cover in the nutrition seminars after the six weeks, 
it's always good to come up for air and take a week break. Um, just eat, you know, four or 500 calories more each and every day. Um, be careful that you don't overeat after you diet and rebound all that weight back. We don't want to do that. Um, but typically after about five or six weeks of dieting, it's good to take about a week break. We call those diet breaks and then just kind of reassess what you want to do and what you learned from those previous six weeks. All right, guys, that's all I got for you. Uh, feel free to ask questions below the video. Anything you guys want to know, I'll answer, and I'll be talking to you guys soon.